did running when I was younger, did lots of different sports, but football's been my main passion. Um, and that's one I hope to continue to stay in within a playing capacity and hopefully eventually go into uh, coaching. How did you have the courage to go into a club? Well, that's a good question. Um, so when I was back when I played in primary school, uh, we didn't actually have uh, a girls team. So I used to just play a lot with the boys um, and used to train with a lot of boys teams. Back then, again, it probably wasn't, there wasn't as many opportunities for girls as there was boys in terms of the football, which is, you know, I think since the World Cup, I think there's been a lot more new opportunities in the last decade. So for you guys, um, you as females, you've got a really fortunate position as sport is becoming more and more heavily involved with trying to get more women involved and, and keep level, female on a level playing field. So I basically played with the boys for as long as I could um, until I was eventually invited along to, to, to take t trials in a, a female um, team. But I, I think it's just about taking yourself out of that comfort zone, what you're used to, and just giving it a go. You'll never know unless you try things. Um, so for me, that was a big step going from the boys into a girls environment. It's something I'd never done before, only ever played with boys. So um, that was a new thing for me. But, you know, once, instantly, as soon as I did it, I, I loved it. And yeah, I, that's how you kind of progressed my way through into that high environment. How many days and hours do you do a week? Oh, good question. So right now, um, I'm a full-time footballer. So we train pretty much to be a full-time footballer. You need to have your brain switched on 24 hours a day. So we train four days a week um, and a game on a Sunday. But even on our days off, we have um, recovery sessions to do. So we're pretty much training seven days a week. Um, we have previously to COVID situations, we were in double days. Um, for now, we just do the one football session, which lasts two hours. And then we do either an IPT, which is basically individual specific training towards our weaknesses or areas of development we wish to work on. And then we go and do a gym session on top of that on a Tuesday, Wednesday. So we probably train probably up to about seven or nine times a week, um, including football recovery sessions. And then we have a match day on a Sunday as well. Do you have a sporting idol? Oh, that's a very good question. I actually have a few. Um, I think probably in the sense of a woman uh, idol, I'm a big fan of Sonia Williams. I think she's been fantastic for her sport. Um, what she represents. Um, it's a very, very difficult one. There's so many good sporting icons out there. Um, I was a big fan of Michael Jordan as well. I don't know, that's probably a bit behind your days, but um, probably past my days as well, if I'm being honest. I'm quite still quite young, I'm going to take that. But he was a very good basketball back in his day and his mindset of that championship mindset and always believing in his ability um, and his resilience to never give up even when he didn't make big shocks or big games. Um, he, he was a fantastic role model in terms of, you know, pitifying what a champion mindset has. Um, and same for Serena. I think she she's very much the same kind of ideal um, and fantastic role model for females in sport. Did you ever think of, did you ever think about giving up when you faced a, sit, a setback and how did you overcome that? Uh, yes, I did. Um, so about two years ago, or probably longer now, three years ago, I had a really bad injury in my hip. Um, similar to like Andy Murray, I don't know if you or any of you have heard of Andy Murray, he's a tennis player. Um, and he had a problem with a bone uh, situation in his hip kind of area. Uh, I had a similar um, problem, so it meant I had to go in for an operation. My hip, and I was out for probably the best part of 10 months. Um, wasn't really allowed to do anything, had to learn how to rewalk. Um, big, big operation and very, very hard to come back from. And I think probably even a year after the operation, I wasn't back to my best and um, I put a lot of effort into that and it was really, really tough mentally to be away from the game for so long. And um, for me, that was probably one of the biggest challenges I faced was that, that maybe that anxiety of thinking maybe I wasn't going to get back to the level where I thought I was going to be at. Um, but I hardly and thank goodness I've been able to come back and I managed just last year to get my first full-time contract. So I think that's just testament that 
there's always going to be sports a bit like a, it's a, it's a roller coaster. You have good days, you have bad days, you have good training days, you have bad training days, you have injuries, the things you can't control. Um, but you just have to meet sure you're always turning up. You turn up, you give a bit your best, even if your best is not quite good enough on the day. I think that consistency and always working hard and, and the ability to try and bounce back from adversity um, will set you in good stead. And I think as well, it's good for a lot of my sporting experiences um, have given me great opportunities and things like work work places and, and opportunities inside universities and coaching opportunities. So you might not always think that the pathway you're on might lead you in different directions, but I think sport really does um, teach you very good habits and really good qualities that you take on later on in life and not just in your sport. What have been the high, point, high points of your journey? My high points of my journey? Um, good question. I've had very, I've been fortunate enough to play all around Europe, um, national team. Um, so I played with the Scotland squad from under 15s, under 17s, under 19s, and I've also been fortunate enough to have a couple of caps at A squad level. So worth that becomes great opportunities of traveling all around Europe, playing in major tournaments. I think it's always fantastic getting to represent your country at the sport that you love. Um, but also, I think one of the biggest highlights for me was getting my first time full-time contract. I think something when I was your guy's age, I always dreamt of being full-time footballer and even back, you're going maybe 10, 15 years ago, that maybe wasn't seen as a as a realistic um, viewpoint for a female. There wasn't a lot of opportunities out there for female footballers to go and do full-time, especially in our country in Scotland, where the money is, is heavily invested in the football side of things. So for me, that was a massive, massive achievement. Um, and all my hard work kind of seemed to be paid off and not getting that opportunity to go and play full time and, and do something I love full time without having to work, you know, a, a full time job on top of trying to do a full time uh, schedule as well. How inspired you to get involved in sport? Oh, that's a good question as well. Um, I have to be perfectly honest, none of my family are very sporty. Um, my mum doesn't even know the left from my right foot, so she's not very sporty at all. Um, we're not very coordinated as a family, but I grew up playing, uh, uh, my best friend was a boy growing up um, and because of that I used to hang about with the boys and I think I kind of got heavily involved in the sport due to their influence and being a bit of a tomboy and always try new things. I tried karate, taekwondo, dancer, absolutely terrible dancer, um, but I loved all the sporting events, I loved running and I think it wasn't until I got a wee bit older that I started to look more into the heavily into sport influences and, you know, I've always had, you know, people that are inspiring athletes that are very, very talented and have, you know, really created these sporting um, icons that you can relate to and inspire to be. But for me, I think it was just more what sport gives you um, in terms of that freedom, that, that headspace it creates, it makes you feel good the great endorphins you get from it and also the people and and again I go back to what, what sport can give you in terms of the personality and the habits you know you have to be really good at timekeeping you have to be well organized you have to be hard working you have to be able to put yourself out there outside your comfort zone every day and you're exposed to that all the time and I think that challenges you to become a better person and teaches you how to work in a team environment as well which is also very very important what age did you start your position and how did you get into it? Good question. So I became a goalkeeper when I was probably about 11 or 12. I didn't start as a goalkeeper. Um, I started as a centre mid, but I wasn't very good. So uh, I got thrown in goals very quickly and I was quite... To be a goalkeeper, you need to, have a, you need to be a wee bit silly, a bit, a wee bit not screwed on in the head. So I think that's how I found my position quite well. and quite fearless, I don't mind jumping about and um, throwing myself about. So I think uh, just accidentally fell into the position, um, but you know, fell in love with it and it's got its good and its bad points. The goalkeeper's a very lonely position and quite often if you make a mistake, it's you're, you're exposed straight away and nine times out of ten it'll lead to a goal, which is sometimes quite hard to swallow. You need to be quite thick skinned and you know take that on the chin sometimes. but. Um, it's a good position, you can see all the pitch and it's fun. I mean, diving about is just, every day is just, a, it's fun. 
<laughs> Do you need to be extremely talented to join a sports club? Not at all. Uh, I think that's oh, I think that's the beauty of sport. Um, it isn't always about being a high achieving athlete or trying to aspire to be these top top athlete. It's doing what you enjoy. There's so many sports out there, and there's so many different levels to suit everybody's needs. So, sport doesn't always always be about the competition, especially at your guys' age. It's just about going out there and enjoying it. Um, and as soon as you stop enjoying it, it's, it, you know, you don't get the best out of yourself out of it. So, sport is is for all levels. It doesn't matter whether you do it for enjoyment or you do it for get, keeping fit, or you do it for the competition. It's what you do it for what works for you. Um, I've been fortunate that I have played at a high level, but you know, sometimes when you get to that higher level, it's a really hostile environment and it's not for everyone, and that's fine. You know, sport at the highest level takes a lot, a lot of energy, a lot of commitment. You know, other people have a lot of aspirations, not just out within sport, but you know, full time jobs and families and you know, you'll have other aspirations outside of just sport. So sport for as long as you can in, in an area and a level that is challenging and accepting to your schedule and how your abilities suit. Because it's really, really rewarding no matter what level you play at. How has COVID effect, affected your involvement in sports? That's a good question. Um, so we basically were shut down in March. So we only got a full time contract in December and we were shut down in March. We didn't have a very long time experience in our full time schedule. So as soon as things went to lockdown, um, obviously no football was allowed, no contact sport. Um, you guys would be pretty much the same. You know what it's like, we're very much housebound. So we had been given programmes throughout of lockdown, um, mostly running, I have to be honest with you, which I do not enjoy. I'm a goalkeeper, I don't do much running myself. So we've had to really adapt in the last five months to try and keep our levels at a a decent enough baseline level so that when we returned to sport and um, we were in a position where we had to build ourselves back up we kind of tried to maintain throughout the whole time which has been very difficult and challenging um, I'm fortunate that I'm a personal trainer so I'm kind of well clued up on what I needed to do in terms of keeping my body ready and doing the strength training um, and the running mechanisms that I required to keep me in a, in a fit and ready state but in terms of the football very very difficult it was just doing what we could um over that break but since we've came back uh, our club's been very very good in terms of adapting and um, we are only doing the one sessions uh, at the minute where it was previously we were in 10 till 4 every day um but we're still getting two hours like slot of football you know four times a week so you're still getting eight hours of contact time on the pitch with our gym sessions and things like that so i think we are still coping very very well we're doing a lot of calls and learning a lot of stuff online. Um, the sport isn't, isn't about the practical, it's also about the game. Um, how well you look after yourself nutrition-wise, your sleep, your recovery, as well as your knowledge of the game. So we've just had to adapt in other ways and try and strengthen other areas of the field that maybe wouldn't be always learned on a football pitch. How has being a female affected you in sports? That's a very good question, Ross. So I think now nowadays the sport, women in sport has evolved massively um, and I think there's a huge amount of opportunities out there for girls now to get more involved in sports, a lot more opportunities for us to have the same um, support systems behind us, maybe still lacking a little bit of media coverage. Um, I know my sport is very much biased towards the men's side, but that isn't the case in all sports. So for me, in terms of if I speak about my experiences, um, I think it's, it, I wouldn't say it's a lot more difficult. I think the main side has its difficulties as well, because there is so many uh, pro youth systems. And I think a lot of boys get lost in the system and maybe good players that had the potential don't quite make it due to the fact of it's a luck who's there in the day. But for females, it's very, very difficult to um, maintain the high standards and the same level of intensity and training when you have full-time jobs, when you're expected to have families and work. I mean, for me, when I, my whole life, I've pretty much worked two jobs or three jobs to try and sustain my full-time training. And as top of that, do uh, my training on top of that. And you can only do that for so long without it taking an effect emotionally, physically, 
you pick up little goals and there just doesn't the same support there um and the opportunities especially in this country but as i mean even in the past five or six years those opportunities have almost doubled um and it's fantastic to see and i wish i was sitting in your guys seat and i could go back and i could relive and i could start the opportunities that you guys have and there is so many opportunities out there now and they are trying to invest more uh, money and get more girls involved in it because sport isn't just for one it's for everyone and like I say, women have their own um, talents and they can use their experiences and their bodies just as well as what men can. And I think that's a really, really inspiring thing to do. And I think the more females we get involved in sport, the more role models you guys can create and you have that opportunity to create for maybe 15 years time when you guys could be on the other end and you could be talking about your experiences. Who was your favourite primary school teacher and why? <laughs> Uh, my favourite primary school teacher. Oh, <laughs> I've got to be biased here, don't I? I've got to. Um, I have to admit, I probably would say it's got. Well, she's changed her name now, but uh, with Miss Calvert. But back then, she was Miss Johnston um, to us. Um, yeah, I have to be honest. I've had loads of great teachers throughout my experiences, and a lot of teachers have been very, very supportive. Um, with a lot of sport experiences and I've always stood by and I think it's very very important that you do take a lot of information from these very wise teachers that sometimes you know though you don't always realise at the time but um, they do have massive influences on you throughout your life and they do, they do have memories in your in your head that will stick with you so do as you're told listen to Miss Calvert she talks sense <laughs> Mm, that was a good question to end it. Thank you, Megan. Is there anything else, any other advice or anything else you'd like to say to Primary 7? I would just like to say a big thank you. Guys, they were really good questions. Um, I hope we've have even taken one bit of information out the whole um, talk that we've had. And, you know, if you ever need anything or if you ever, ever have any more questions that you've maybe not been able to ask, let Miss Calvert know and she can always pass them on to me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I think you guys are in a really, really fortunate position in your time to go out there and, and experience sport. So use it, try new things, Try. don't be scared to try things that you're maybe not so good at. I didn't start out as a good footballer, let me tell you. I was terrible when I first started, but <laughs> your passion and your love for the sport will allow you to develop. So no matter what you choose, whether you do it for the enjoyment or you do it for the high performance side of things, if you commit to it 100% and you're always looking to develop and work on and take yourself out of that comfort zone, you will get better and you will get these experiences and these new opportunities that will arise from it. Thank you again for having me.